Hi, everybody. Welcome to the NVIDIA Omniverse live stream. Very happy to have you with us today. We have a very special show. We're going to cover everything from GTC, from Inception, which is NVIDIA's starter program. And of course, the main topic of today is developing with OpenUSD. Um, we're going to get started right away because a lot to cover. So, uh, so first, we'll start with GTC, which is literally um, just a couple of weeks away, uh, March 17th, 21st. Uh, there are a couple of things that everyone should be aware of. If you're not registered yet or if you're on the fence, you need to get off that fence because DTC is going to be an absolutely amazing show. Uh, look at these topics um, uh, that will be presented there. Uh, almost something there for everybody. There's a couple of great discounts available. There's a community uh, discount. We'll post the link in a second, which gives you 25% off your ticket. Um, it's free for virtual. We're going to do our best to support everybody virtually as well, as well of course. But there's no replacement for being on site, be able to meet with the developers, meet with the partners, go to the expo floor. Uh, amazing sessions we have, Open USD Day, uh, which uh, will kick off with a nice breakfast and a lunch. Um, and there's another, if you've ever been to GTC before, uh, there's an alumni discount, which some people might not know about. All you need to do is register for this GTC with the same email address you used previously, and you'll automatically get the alumni discount. I believe it's 40%. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. Um, I think all, nearly all of us will be there. Uh, so Jen's actually leading sessions. We talked about that last week with Ashley. Uh, Richard will be there. Uh, we were setting up a nice rig for him so he could show off some rendering magic and get some tips and tricks. Paul will be there helping everybody who has helped pub wants help publishing. Um, and uh, I will be there with the community team also uh, as part of the community team. Um, it's just going to be a lot of fun. The, uh, so on Tuesday, uh, let me see. On Tuesday, uh, and these are some of the people who are speaking there. Look at that gentleman on the upper left. I think I recognize him. Uh, but many other visionaries uh, will be speaking there. Um, and we're just really excited. If you, uh, if you haven't already added the keynote to your calendar, you should do that. because That kind of kicks things off uh, in a very big way. Uh, this is going to be some pretty amazing announcements that, uh, that we're just really excited to share with everybody. Um, and then I think uh, we're doing a, uh, an open USD day on Tuesday. Uh, so Tuesday, the week of GTC. Um, so Paul, you're actually uh, helping with uh, the organization of open USD day. What can people look forward to there? There's a, there's a lot. It's pretty crazy. Um, there's several hands-on labs, like fundamentals of USD and a few of those. And then a lot of talks from uh, industry luminaries around the world. And what's, what's really cool about it, I think, is that you're seeing pockets of deep excellence in one industry hopping to another. So you see like somebody working on uh, visual effects or in media and entertainment, and now they're moving over to heavy industry doing automotive, or you see somebody in rendering and now they're moving in. And so this whole concept of this universal scene description that experts from a variety of different backgrounds can come together and help people train robots or optimize inventory or all sorts of really interesting things. So it's, it's fun to see the variety and the crossover and it just, I don't know, represents a lot of potential, I think, for folks and the and the industry. Absolutely. And so I have on the screen, so thanks, Amelia, for helping with this slide. We have a nice uh, uh, overview of what's happening on Open USD Day, Tuesday, March 19th. Uh, Kicking off with breakfast. If you look there on the on the right, we have a networking breakfast, a couple of networking events, a breakfast and a lunch with experts. That's going to be a really uh, amazing time. Um, introduction to Open USD, uh, building tools for digital worlds. Um, everything as Paul was just saying, I think it's going to be a really fantastic way to engage with the developers working on some of the groundbreaking technologies that you're reading about. Uh, and we'd love to be able to help you and your business. Um, uh, Adobe's Cesium, Samsung, Siemens. Uh, it's going to be a really fantastic day. So we hope the, everyone the, can make it. The networking here will be tremendous. Like, yeah, just rubbing out with each other and talking. And uh, it's more than even just the information. <laughs> There'll be a lot of great information, but like just being with these folks and, and sharing your ideas is really powerful. Absolutely. And we, uh, the GTC app is live right now. And in the coming days, there'll be a supplementary app. Uh, I believe it's using the Brain Date platform to organize meetings. So you'll be able to see who is attending GTC and request meetings, and it will help you set up the right day and time for both parties. Um, that's a really powerful thing. And I think that uh, I think there will be great opportunities for everyone to uh, set up meetings there. I know the Inception team will be there, right, Les? You guys will be uh, there in full force? Full force. We have an entire pavilion featuring um, dozens of Inception startups. A lot of cool technology is going to be on display. And uh, we're really excited. 
All right, that's all. Well, that's a great segue uh, to what we'll, we'll show up right now. So we thought it'd be really fun. And in the community, we get a lot of uh, people come into Discord or on the forums who are clearly uh, got a great idea and they're starting to work on something. And we always, the first thing we do is, hey, have you heard about NVIDIA Inception? It's amazing that, uh, that uh, uh, a lot of people aren't aware of this free program available for startups. So before uh, we let Les kind of give more details, let's, let's look at this quick video on what Inception is, and then we'll be right back. NVIDIA Inception is partnering with thousands of the world's most innovative companies. Startups at the forefront of AI, data science, gaming, and other breakthrough industries. NVIDIA Inception is the free program that empowers startups through every stage of their life cycle. Learn how you can fast track your path to success with these program benefits. Accelerate your growth with credits for technical training, online forums, and expert guidance. Jumpstart your development in the cloud, on-prem, and at the edge with over 150 NVIDIA SDKs, pre-trained models, cloud credits, and preferred hardware pricing. Explore funding opportunities and introductions through the NVIDIA Inception VC Alliance, a community of investors excited to connect with you. Strengthen your startup's visibility through exclusive events, speaking opportunities, and promotional support. NVIDIA seems to be one of the few of only companies building a robust startup program. No matter what your size or funding stage, NVIDIA Inception can accelerate your growth. Join our global community of innovators today to see what's possible. That is amazing. And, and so we're very lucky to have Les joining us today from the Inception team. Les, thank you so much for coming. Um, first, uh, you want to introduce yourself and kind of what your role is at Inception? Absolutely. So I'm Les Karpis. I'm the Inception Partner Manager for Robotics, Manufacturing, and Autonomous Vehicles. And okay, that is, that uh, is awesome. go ahead and pull up my presentation deck here. And while Les is doing that, I can't tell you how many times so we made those referrals to the Inception team. And every single time the response we get back was, that is an amazing service. We are benefiting so much from Inception. It's just really valuable. And um, I'm just, you know, I think it's one of the best best hidden secrets sometimes that NVIDIA offers. Let me see, we got this, uh, okay, here is a deck. I think we can see it now. Oh, great. So um, let me dive right in here. So first thing to know about NVIDIA is uh, our library of APIs and SDKs is far more vast than you might imagine. Uh, I know that I thought I understood the ecosystem and then I joined and my hair was kind of blown back and I was like, wow, we do so much more than I realized. That includes uh, SDKs and APIs for large language models, for robotic simulation, for uh, cloud-based inferencing. There's, there's a lot to navigate and a lot to understand. And what Inception does is it provides a lot of resources for you to learn about these various tools that we have and how to deploy and implement them. So Inception is a, a massive uh, group of companies at this point. We're over 18,000 members. And uh, I'm a two-time former founder, and uh, a couple of my companies are presently in Inception, so I've personally seen the value, and now I'm on the other side of the table, which is fun for me. Um, there are four major benefits of being inside of Inception. Uh, first is getting access to the Deep Learning Institute. This is our libraries of documentation and coursework that teach you how to use our tools. Uh, the second is cloud credits. So if you have not received any free cloud credits from AWS or GCP through another accelerator, we can give you $100,000 in cloud credits for free just by joining Inception. Then we have a discounted program on hardware and cloud services. Generally speaking, that's about 30% off of any hardware that you buy through Inception. So that's uh, pretty valuable right there. And then last, but probably most valuable is our collection of developer tools that includes things like Tensor RT, Triton Inference Server, Jetson Microservices, and uh, the Omniverse universe of simulation tools, a lot of which will you know, be covered within OpenUSD Day. 
But Inception is not just about building, it's also about selling. So if you have a, a startup that has a service or a product, you can be listed in what we call our accelerated apps catalog, which is a collection of solutions that's browsable in like a Netflix style interface for uh, the greater corporate world to be able to discover you. And that's about to get a major refresh and relaunch at GTC that you'll hear more about soon, but we're very excited about it. Additionally, uh, joining Inception means that you um, can get the Inception logo on your company's web page, as well as connect into our VCA community for startup matching uh, with venture capital. And so these are the, the main areas that we uh, that we cover. I'm, I'm happy to uh, to take any questions about it, but um, really excited to be here and let you guys know about Inception today. That's amazing. Wow. So, so it's such a value. It's, uh, it's all for free. Um, can you kind of walk us through kind of, so what's the process? So when I, when I send a, a community member over to the Inception team, what normally kind of happens from there? So first there is a questionnaire that um, the um, startup founder needs to fill out. And that basically creates their application. That might take like a half hour to fill out properly. Then that goes to our community team for review and screening. That usually takes about two weeks. And then you get uh, admitted into the program, which gives you a portal, which gives you the access to the cloud credits, the discounted purchasing, and to the DLI Institute. And there's a, there's an interesting side benefit that I, I've, I've personally made use of. So as we're thinking about Omniverse and different APIs that people might want to adopt and different workflows that might need, be, need to be supported, we often look through the inception list of partners and we're like, hmm, I wonder if there's somebody already doing something like this or somebody being really innovative and pushing forward in this direction. And then we'll work with the inception team to get a connection and meet with them and talk about what's going on. And and it's just been great to be able to see the kinds of companies that are in, in the inception program. And then I'm sure that many other parts of NVIDIA do the same thing that I do, right? If, like I'm on Omniverse, but there's people in robotics and healthcare and like all these other different forums. So it's a great way to expose your company to the larger NVIDIA uh, internal team too. Yeah, and so that application that you fill out as you're on your way in, that's why that is so important because that populates the data for the rest of the company to be able to see. Uh, and then can you post the link to join Inception into the uh, into the chat? I believe uh, I believe Amelia just has. Um, yep. So you should check your chat, check it, uh, uh, the chat. If you're watching this, uh, there's a link on the screen there. Um, very, uh, very helpful, resourceful website um, and really easily to get started, as Les mentioned. Um, I think it's just an amazing resource available to startups. Uh, so Les, thank you so much for presenting and you'll be at GTC. So if people want to want to meet you there uh um that would be uh that would be amazing also thank you guys so much it was a, a pleasure to talk, talk to everyone today thanks les okay so now we are going to uh, dive in uh, to the topic at hand for today's episode which is to start developing with open usd we've got a couple of very special guests here uh not only do we have jen baruki from our team uh hey jen Aww. she <laughs> I'm, I'm still waking up. <laughs> Everyone will recognize uh, Jen from her great uh, a collaboration with uh, Eric on the other live stream series uh, that they do in the developing and uh, right now they're working on the, the Jet Racer project and those labs we presented at GTC. Uh, so really happy. So Jen is, is a great resource for the community uh, and development. So we thought this would be a great time to actually have her on here and, and, let, and, we'll, and with Paul Cutsinger who's with us also. To uh, to kind of discuss like what what it, what does it mean to develop uh, leveraging Omniverse and OpenUSD uh, and to that effect we have another special guest Nandu is here so everyone in the community know, knows who Nandu is because he is uh, spearheading our OpenUSD study group uh, that takes place every week um, Nandu do you want to kind of introduce yourself to people who might not be uh, in the community yet they're just watching this for the first time uh, sure. Uh... So my name is Nandu, and I'm the uh, you know I uh, I'm one of the co-owners, co-founders of uh, N uh, out of our technologies. So we currently are developing uh, immersive visualization applications for industrial inspections, uh, repair and maintenance. And um, I have a presentation to show later on. So 
That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So, and, and we thought it would be great to have Nan Yu on because as he's developing on Omniverse with OpenGD, he's also been teaching it. Uh, uh, and I think the, the whole USC study group started with Maddie, right? With Maddie, uh, Maddie on our team. Yes. So Maddie was uh, instrumental in helping us get started. And uh, uh, I have some information to share towards that aspect as well. So. Okay. Awesome. Well, what, why don't we start off by actually, um, so tell us, uh, for those who might not be aware of what industrial inspection is, uh, I know a bunch of us kind of not agree, so we know what it is, but for those out there who might not know, how would you define that? Sure. So do you mind if I start the presentation? Yeah, or? please do. That'd be yeah. great. And there's some questions in the comments about replicator and stuff. We'll get to those. I think they're going to fit really nicely into this. Okay, perfect. Um, and uh, we'll start sharing now your screen in just a second, but definitely keep your, your questions coming and your comments in the chat. We will try to hit them uh, as we go along or we'll, we'll, uh, uh, and we'll share now your screen now. There you go. I think we're seeing it. There you go. All right. So uh, our company is uh, an hour of our technologies. Uh, of our means uh, dimensions in Sanskrit. So uh, we are building n dimensional visualizations for um, basically to address quality and safety of industrial assets. So that's our uh, you know, uh, motto and uh, that's our goal. Um, industrial inspection spans uh, pretty much any asset that uh, humans have uh, ever built. So whether it's a jet engine or an aircraft fuselage, an oil tank uh, or a chemical tank or any other assets. So, uh, <clears throat> so I kind of like uh, lead the uh, company in terms, and my background is in mechanical engineering. Uh, over the last few years, I've worked on a lot of uh, 3D visualizations, AR, VR, XR, and industrial inspections. And my uh, other co-founder, Dr. Singh, is an uh, innovation coach and a digital transformation expert. And uh, my other co-founder, Dr. Sham, who is actually based in Bangalore, India, is uh, has worked in industrial inspection technologies for more than 36 uh, plus years uh, across a wide range of industries. And our current focus is uh, aerospace and defense and oil and gas industries. Um, <clears throat> I'll give a little bit background of uh, who I am and how I have uh, you know, uh, arrived here. So I worked a lot in 3D design, uh, 3D printing, 3D visualizations. Um, and uh, uh, almost like uh, three, three and a half years back, we worked on a um, uh, immersive project for uh, a local planetarium where the students can get an experience of uh, how they can uh, operate uh, a robotic arm on the International Space Station. So, um, you know, uh, looking at it on a big screen, they can control a digital artifact uh, using a, a physical controller. So uh, that kind of like gives you some ideas of like, you know, the type of applications uh, uh, in the past that we have built. Um, coming to the industrial inspection, uh, today, uh, a lot of uh, inspection is done both uh, manual as well as, uh, uh, you know, semi-autonomous or even autonomous. Uh, the sensors uh, on the probes, uh, they move over the part. Uh, and then like, you know, you can see on, on the video on the right. So. Uh, the person is inspecting and uh, typically this is like an ultrasound or an eddy current you are looking for an internal defect and that information is presented to the users uh, in the form of uh, graphs or like some kind of a heat map so the user has to reconstruct the the model in his uh, in his mind in terms of like you know how the defect might look like so that has been the traditional way of doing things and with advancements in uh, you know AR, VR, and a lot of hardware and software technologies, what you see here at the bottom is like um, uh, now you can integrate uh, some of this equipment uh, with uh, AR, VR, and uh, you know on the on the AR headset uh, we can project uh, like a two D overlay of the defect information, or even uh, you know uh, in nowadays you can even do it in 3d so uh, at an exact location within the component so that reduces a lot of cognitive uh, overload on the inspectors uh, you know perspective so it's it's a significant uh, you know advantage uh, we built a proof of concept as part of a US Air Force uh, SBAR uh, where we developed a, a unity based virtual reality application where, uh, the users can, uh, you know, uh, get a feel to uh, move the probe and then, you know, see the uh, the inspection data. But then, 
you know, we also present like a 3D uh, visualization of the defect information itself. So uh, uh, moving uh, forward, uh, over the last uh, year and a half, uh, I've been building uh, NVIDIA Omniverse uh, applications. Uh, <clears throat> So this enables us to uh, kind of like build the applications uh, uh, like a foundation of like, you know, whether it could be AR, VR, or uh, a mixed reality application. Uh, here in, in, the, in the video on the left, you see that uh, I navigate a digital artifact using an Xbox controller. Uh, the same thing, and, and all this rendering is in Omniverse. It's just a custom app. Uh, uh, now, uh, instead of having an Xbox controller, uh, in the in this case, I don't have the video, but I have the uh, the image where we had a a dummy uh, probe as well as a uh, uh, dummy part as well. Uh, it's not a real part, so we are mimicking the part. But this gives the ability to train uh, industrial inspectors in a numerous cases when they not when uh, they don't really have the actual part with them. Uh, we can even 3D print complex parts and uh, use uh, these kind of simulations uh, to train uh, inspectors in uh, you know cases that they may uh, you know never have they may have never seen in the field, uh, but they would like to uh, you know inspect because there is a new order that has come in, right? So there's a new work that needs to do. And hey, Nandu, so, can I can I pile onto this sure. one? This is this, sure. First of all, this is all this is all so exciting and amazing. I've, I've, I've you've shown me this before, and it's really really cool. Um, one part that's really subtle in this picture that I would love everybody to see is this app that's shown here mm -hmm. is, is your custom app. It's not USD Composer or USD Code or US, it's you, you made an app with just the UI you wanted. You want to have a viewport and these other in this panel with these properties and just the controls you want. And I think that's super powerful and, and often overlooked by folks is that with this whole notion of USD, there's a collection of tools that you can use to build bespoke experiences for the USD uh, on top of this. And you've done just that. And it just inspires me. I just love that you've, you've just tailored it to exactly what you need it to be. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, uh, you know, that, that this was, uh, you know, at the, at the uh, onset of when, uh, you know, the uh, custom app capability was released uh, in yeah. Omniverse. Uh, you know, I was kind of like experimenting. It's it's so great because so the so the idea is like uh, you always want to uh, you know reduce the clutter on the screen and let the users uh, you know drive and you mm -hmm. know uh, be it in a manner that's very intuitive and easier for them to use, right? So that was the objective, and I think uh, that's where the Nvidia Custom Omniverse app that I can build on uh, you know Omniverse it's it's really fantastic for us. Yeah. So I, I could imagine, and I've seen other companies do things where they have the same scene, one scene, but then you have three different apps running on it. One for the mechanical engineers, one for the layout artists, one for the operator of a thing, right? You can imagine very bespoke user experiences so that people don't have the learning curve, right? They can just focus on their job. Exactly, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, um, so cool. yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks so much. Uh, so- No, uh, it's, it's amazing what you're doing. Uh, and then, like you know, uh, what you see on 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 the bottom here is like you know, this is also somewhat of a um, uh, we just prototyped uh, as a, as part of a proof of concept for an oil and gas industry. What you see here is like a uh, you know a flange phase. Uh, you know, a lot of oil and gas industries, uh, the key aspects are like you know, flange phase corrosion is a significant challenge for them. Uh, they do it, the inspections from the outside when when the plant is in service. Uh, they capture the corrosion information exactly similar like an ultrasound sensor, but the the change that is occurring uh, in the inspection industry is like a lot of the sensors and the equipment now uh, are are able to provide uh, like a almost like a voxel information, a 3D point cloud or a voxel information. So now what I can do is I can take that and I can uh, build almost like a uh, digital twin. Uh, uh, and if I look at it, uh, say every uh, year or every uh, six months, if they uh, every few months, if they if they do the scan, I can collect that information. And you know, at some point, I want to build uh, like a predictive uh, application that will uh, you know uh, kind of like give me uh, how a particular corrosion growth is happening. Uh, a lot of times, the the challenge is like industries have uh, specific. Uh, 
uh, the entire, uh, you know, the piping and the equipment design specific to the kind of fluid that they're handling in the chemical industries. And I think, you know, uh, observing these patterns and, you know, understanding the behaviors uh, is going to give them a, a lot of insight so that they can prevent accidents from happening, right? So, so that's another uh, kind of like an application uh, I hope to build in the future. Such an amazing use case. How are you imagining to use USD for that? Because USD is way more than just for visualization, right? You can source lots of data. What do you what do you think in there? Uh, yes. So uh, so the way uh, to to give you uh, an idea of like uh, imagine if I'm able to capture uh, the flange phase corrosion uh, over a period of like say two years. So. Yeah. Now I have uh, each and every uh, uh, one of the uh, scans that we have that has been done, which is uh, you know stored as a 3D uh, rendering uh, mm -hmm. as a variant uh, in uh -huh. USD, right? So uh, that's something I was kind of like you know planning the other day. So how will be I, 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 uh, how can I show this? Uh, it could be as a variant, right? Or if somebody wants to see uh, a, a seamless, uh, uh, almost think of like, uh, you know, how uh, your weather map uh, shows up the clouds moving over. Mm -hmm. So I want to see like, you know, how the corrosion pattern is growing. So there may be other ways, uh, you know, just timeline. using sub layers, right? Mm -hmm. So like a timeline sub layers. So th there are multiple ways that I can achieve this problem. Uh, so, so cool. Yeah. So cool. Um, so uh, here's uh, another uh, application uh, that we prototyped and built. Uh, so this application is built in uh, uh, Paraview. And uh, what, here, what we're doing here is like uh, simulating how ultrasound can propagate uh, within a part. Now, this is extremely important because we want to train inspectors so that they can understand with this uh, you know, uh, simulation in the lab. Uh, the idea is like, uh, if they understand how the ultrasound propagates, so they will ensure that uh, all the parts uh, or all the uh, the entire part is inspected thoroughly. So we don't want them to miss any area, right? So if you if they can see the visualization, so they then they, you know uh, uh, we are we are not guaranteed, but at least we are sure that you know they will ensure that the part is thoroughly inspected. And this is where uh, again uh, Omniverse and OpenUST comes into play. Uh, here I'm able to uh, you know integrate uh, Paraview with uh, Omniverse, and uh, any change that I make uh, you know in Paraview, it's reflected uh, in Omniverse. So at some point in the future, I want to build an application where uh, you know going back to the uh, the inspection provisioning, uh, you know, uh, as and when they move the probe, I can have another window that can show how the ultrasound is propagating. So uh, that will give them the ability to make sure, hey, you know, I, I got the part covered, right? So that, that's a significant advantage that we see going forward. And so that's, that's one of the other applications. And uh, I like to thank Jan for helping me with this application. So, uh, so this I, I leveraged uh, the latest, uh, you know, IoT uh, uh, proof of concepts that Nvidia published. And uh, using the live file, I'm able to uh, update uh, data that's uh, coming from uh, multiple sensors. So, the the challenge is like you know, in some of the complex inspection procedures. So, you have data like you know, the the parts are uh, you know large, like an aircraft wing or a fuselage, and you know if uh, different people are checking for different inspection data, whether it's like uh, uh, use including using different modalities like ultrasound or eddy current. Uh, now, we want to look at all of the data uh, in a single view, and then uh, you know. Uh, uh, able to uh, look at it and then uh, make informed decisions. Uh, now, the the uh, the fun part of this is like you know uh, once I build uh, as part of this uh, application, um, I can also uh, provision this in uh, uh, an augmented reality, right? So so the the inspectors, uh, you know, the the uh, personnel who are doing the actual procedure can view it in augmented reality. Uh, however. Uh, if you have a remote expert, uh, he can get the same information, uh, the same uh, data in uh, near real time, uh, uh, look at the data and then assist the field inspectors and then help them uh, in terms of, hey, you know, uh, if, they, if they run into any challenges, so he can help them troubleshoot. So I think that this is really uh, going to be really powerful for uh, you know, uh, industrial inspections. And all of this is uh, possible uh, using Omniverse and uh, OpenUST. It's so. super cool. I, I've seen something in another industry that might 
fit for you? Just a just an idea in factory planning. Um, yes. One of the things is you walk around and you draw on the you say, hey, I don't like this or these, this measurement's wrong or you make notes and you set waypoints and mm -hmm. then other people could come in and look at it and then they can they can be the expert on it. Like, OK, hey, let's how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with this issue? And they, and they solve it. But they don't have to look at everything. They can just go from waypoint to waypoint to waypoint and get the job done. So I could imagine in this you have you have one job, which is the scanning of it. And then another job of like, oh, this is a weird thing. Let's circle it. Let's make some notes about it. And then we, we set it up for review and then somebody yeah. else comes in, maybe even in a different app and they come through to the waypoint and they, okay, let's figure out what's going on with this. And they can have like different data that's showing up or details or whatever. Um, so it might be an interesting like move over, like a factory yes. to a defect detection. Absolutely. The, the, that's the thing that you kind of like, uh, you know, when you mentioned uh, at the beginning of this uh, discussion, when you said like, you know, you know, people are moving from uh, one industry to the other, uh, I, I see a total parallel here. So it's yeah. like, you know, a lot of the work that's been done in the other industries so we can adapt. Um, I, I, I think where this is going to really help is like, you know, uh, building the underlying, uh, you know, a lot of the, the tools and the modules uh, so that we can leverage. Uh, the idea is to is to make it uh, easier for, uh, you know, mid and small size companies to, uh, you know, leverage some of these kind of tools uh, so that they can maintain the, their assets, uh, you know, uh, uh, reliably and safely. Right. So at the end of the day, that that's what we are interested in. And I think uh, absolutely you know, we would be glad to uh, borrow those ideas from others. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Super so, cool. yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you. And uh, with that, uh, uh, again, a shout out to Open USD Day. So, uh, you know, please uh, 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 kind of like, uh, you know, uh, see the uh, or, you know, attend uh, virtually or real. Uh, it'll be fun. And as uh, Edmar also mentioned, uh, join our uh, study group discussions on Tuesday evenings uh, at 5 p.m. on the community room, uh, one on Discord channel, on um, uh, Omnibus Discord channel. Uh, if you are an expert, uh, share your insights uh, and uh, uh, help us uh, address some of the problems. If you are a novice, uh, we will uh, help you get up to speed uh, to learn OpenUSD. So uh, thank you so much. By the way, I gotta say thank you again for that USD community stuff you're driving. It is so, yeah. so inspiring to see yeah. you get in there and just teach and share and celebrate what people are doing. I mean, it's such a so, new space. Like there's, we gotta shake the last 20 years of design have been happening and there's a new moment and, and you're doing some really cool stuff to help people see the future and to plan the future and make the future. And I just, I'm just floored by what you've been doing in that community. It's just super cool. Uh, no, I mean, th thanks to, uh, you know, Maddie, Edmar, uh, Jen, all these guys, you know, they, they have been, you know, kind of like uh, helping us in the in the background, right? So, uh, yeah. but I think, uh, you know, uh, we definitely want to, uh, you know, uh, help anybody else who wants to learn. So we, we want to kind of like uh, help them and, you know, get up to speed. And, you know, I, I, I personally see a real value. From an industrial inspection perspective, there are changes that are happening on multiple fronts, just like any other industry in the industry 4.0, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have the data that's, uh, you know, now you can, you know, capture not just in 2D anymore, you can capture in 3D. So, uh, you know, we can leverage the, the, those kind of insights. And then, like, you know, there is a... Uh, uh, huge, uh, you know, uh, impetus to uh, use AR, VR for, for training and then, you know, remote collaboration. So, uh, you know, experts cannot be uh, there uh, at the place where you need all the time. So uh, how can you leverage, right? So uh, all of this uh, is is driving, is, is helping us. And, you know, uh, tools like this are, are enabling us to build applications that we can uh, help these companies uh, to ensure uh, the assets are safe and reliable. And I think uh, to that extent, you know, uh, we will help others who are interested in learning open USD. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's awesome. And then the other thing I'd love to, to throw out is like the work you're doing right now is already immediately valuable and you're laying the foundation for enabling an, a whole wave of AI stuff to help more. Like you've got like the variance in this time series data training and, and, and these scenes that you're building, these worlds that you're building become the training grounds for the future AI. So today we kind of train AI on text and pictures. And in the future, you'll train AI on 3D scenes with full yes. data. And so yeah, it's no. really cool. 
Yeah, no, uh, ab absolutely. So I, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, this is where, you know, that's why, like, you know, we kind of like in our UST study group discussions, we always keep talking about, um, uh, I don't know whether Zia is on the on the call today, but then, like, you know, we keep talking about, like, uh, you know, how do we structure the our, our USD for industrial assets? I mean, we see a lot about, like, uh, you know, entertainment, uh, you know, uh, architecture and engineering. So for mm -hmm. industrial assets, what's the right way, right? So those are the kind of discussions we are, we are kind of, like, you know, uh, embarking on. So uh, I think it, it'll be fun next few years for sure. Yeah. So. Well, thanks for thanks for being on the ride together. It's so fun to be there with you. This is so cool. Amazing, uh, and I, I absolutely agree with Paul. The 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 work you're doing with the community on Discord um, uh, has just been really inspiring, um, and it's cool. You guys do it every week like clockwork. There's no, and everybody does their homework too. I've noticed. <laughs> Well, well, sometimes I mean I'm I'm kind of like you know last uh, you know few weeks have been busy, but then like uh, you know we 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 do keep uh, you know pushing people, and uh, you know uh, uh, we just want to share what problems they are facing, right? So um, I think those are some of the other things you know we want to start uh, you know uh, maybe like you know bringing some structure. Uh, I know Maddie helped us a lot to put some structure to kind of like, uh, you know, the, for the basic, you know, uh, people to get up and uh, running. Uh, but then I think still there is a long way to go. And I think, uh, you know, there, there is a huge, uh, you know, value add that we see uh, in building these virtual worlds. Uh, you know, I was just watching the, the CES presentation from the Siemens CEO the other day. And then, like, you know, he said, like, uh, uh, if you can visualize something before you do, you are going to reduce the errors and mistakes, uh, uh, you know, uh, tremendously and i think that's that is where that's kind of like the holy grail where we want to be so that like uh you know we can reduce the uh the wastage as well as you know the the errors and all of those kind of things so yeah yeah wow cool well a great a great segue so i think you've, you've given everybody a, a lot to really think about and you you jumped on really early on with uh with developing with open usd and omniverse platform uh like paul noticed you know really customizing things for your workflow um, so th that's just a great way to segue into a discussion with Jen and Paul and Nandu jump in uh, whenever, and of course, Richard, but about what does it mean to actually start developing with OpenUSD? Um, what is actually involved? What are the first steps? Um, you know, Paul and I had, had a meeting earlier with, um, uh, with this great company. Uh, and one of the things that Paul mentioned, which I, I thought was um, uh, really should be like shared from the rooftops, everybody, about how the the basically the example applications that are included with Omniverse are just that they're example applications. They're they're foundational, kind of meant to uh, show what's possible. Uh, and Nvidia really wants everyone to rip it apart and do whatever you want with it. Put your own name on it. Uh, take what you need. Throw away what you don't. Um, and uh, and I think that that's still maybe not, maybe not everyone is aware of that uh, still, Paul. So maybe we need to um, broaden that message more. Yeah, hopefully. Um I guess overall, I'd say like the there's two main entry points. Well, first, Nvidia has been thinking a lot about accelerated computing for a while, and and as a part of thinking about that, we've been talking to all sorts of different industry leaders and figuring out what do they need, like what what would really change the game for them, what would really make their business incredibly more powerful or incredibly more popular or, or, or um, profitable or any of those kinds of things. And there was a lot of talk about what you said, Nandu, reducing waste, understanding what's going on before it happens, planning ahead. And they needed this like full world visualization. And today, a lot of what they're doing is they're taking data from five, six, seven different disciplines and they're they're shoehorning it into a game engine. So they'll take their all their CAD data and they'll get rid of all the richness so that it can fit into a game engine or they're getting all of their and then, and then they bring their designers in, but the designers not working off the real CAD files. They're working off of this 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 lighter version. And now, when the CAD files change, there's this whole cycle that goes through. And then then you want the marketing people to be able to do stuff, and they want to be able to take a look at the car. And it's not the real files from the beginning. It's this new thing. And so there was just a lot of struggle and waste from everything through the manufacturing and design process. Um, and so. That's where a lot of this has come from. Is like, how can we help expose accelerated computing to those workloads and get things rolling? And and Nandu, the, the the slice that you picked out was really great. Industrial inspection is a, a critical piece of that. Um, so, where are the two places to start when you're thinking about USD? I, I think there's two really simple places to start, and they and everything else seems to sort of 
evolve out of that. The first is do something with USD. Like realize that it's not just a file format that you should ignore. And, you know, like a lot of apps you just use the app and then the file is the side product. You don't really care what the file format is. In USD, get in, understand it. It's more than a file format. It's a file format and an API and a structure for how to describe scenes. You need to think about layering and composition with the variants and the payloads and all that stuff. You need to think about how to make it totally sensorily correct so that robots and visual inspection and, and all that kind of stuff can happen or that it's great enough for marketing purposes, great enough for engineering purposes. Like there's, there's a lot of nuance to it. So I would say just get in and make something with USD, bring something in from your favorite app, mess with it, do stuff, just really start to understand the fundamentals of USD. And, and you can do that in many programs, like lots of programs have connectors. Um, you can use the, the foundation apps that we've produced. You can use the ones that Pixar have produced. doesn't really much matter. Just get in and, and just feel the USD. And I don't care what discipline you are, right? Like, so, yeah. So, 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 Paul, just to uh, you know, uh, sorry to interrupt you in the middle. Oh, no. So, uh, so, so, uh, you know, our study group, you know, kind of like brainstormed to figure out, hey, how do we, how do we get people started, right? So, so, you, so, so, what you're saying, like, you know, uh, you know, get started, right? So, and I'm pasting a link on 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 the chat, uh, and you know, that's what you know, Maddie helped us compile. So, you have like a a, a basic uh, course on USD that you can get, uh, you know, up and running. Right, so to kind of like you know play around, uh, get to understand, get to know uh, various things, and I think you know I just shared that uh, you know uh, Google Drive spreadsheet, so people are interested can uh, you know it, it's it's almost like a curriculum kind of a thing uh, with uh, uh, information from various places, but then it'll get you uh, up and running on the basic USD stuff. Uh, as you said, right? So all you know, whether the layer, uh, the you know sub layers, uh, yeah. uh, payloads, mm -hmm. variants, references, you know, all those things. The the, the USD composition, right? So it helps us. It it helps one to get up and running to build some basic uh, USD, uh, edit, manipulate, do whatever you want to do, and then start learning, and uh, you know, uh, and then come to our group. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's the, that's a great call. That that is a great reference, by the way. That perfect. And also that group is a great place. Um, if you go to GDC, there's there's courses there, there's the USD sure. day there, there's all sorts of people there. It, it almost matters more that you have the mindset of, I'm gonna go figure out how to describe anything in the world virtually. And I'm gonna do that with USD. What, what, the, what the heck does that mean? Well, I don't know, figure out what it means for you and just let your passion fly, like just dig in there and you'll, you'll see so many cool things. Um, the second thing I would say about getting started is um, very often you're going to run into a spot where you're like, I don't want to sit in a text editor and type this out in English. I want to use tools and I want to use tools to get the job done and figure out what's going on. And there's a bunch of tools that already exist for whatever purpose they've, you know, you can use Adobe Substance and you can use Maya and Revit and they all work together in, in this sort of USD Omniversity ecosystem, or you can build your own. And I think it's important that early in your early in your growth cycle of this sort of USD space, make your own tools. And there is a very the simplest way to do that is just go make an extension. Just go dive in, make some simple extension. You'll do a little bit of Python, get in there, and you'll start using the USD APIs, and you can start to make things happen in, in there. And that will that will first of all, open your mind to what can happen and get the right team around you so that you have all the right people to build out the workflows you want. And you'll end up where like Nandu did with, with building an app, or maybe you'll build a web page with a viewport rendered into it and UI around the, with the controls. Like, I don't know where you'll end up, but you, you have the, you are untethered from the UIs that somebody else has created for you. And you now have all of the power to do exactly what you need with USD and exactly the way you need to do it. So I would say, do something with USD and build an extension. And then from there, it, it lets you go wherever you need to go. I think uh, Paul's basically trying to pull my experience and trying to frame it into words because that's kind of what I <laughs> what I started to do when I was doing uh, a lot of USD stuff because I, again, I thought it was just a regular old FBX or object file as, you know, I, lots of Unity or Unreal. It's just like, ah, oh, it's just an error file format but then when you start to like 
really get into it, especially when you're trying to program in it, you're trying to do things like manipulating the scenes or you're trying to add in objects or you're trying to just make a tool. So like a simple tool could be, I just want to spawn in a bunch of pallets everywhere in my, uh, in my scene. And you could do that very easily. We actually do have a minute, a 10 minute video on how to build your first extension that could potentially show you how to do that. Uh, you just need to replace the cube with a palette though. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, it, it, from there it's like, oh, okay. Now it becomes more complex. Then you start actually getting into it. You're looking at, you know, some of the tools that we have, and then you could even see what we're doing inside the USD file as well and how we're kind of manipulating it and, you know, all this, uh, different kinds of things. It, it, you know, once you get into it, you kind of go into this big old wormhole and it's like, oh my God, there's so much, but you know, Nandu has a great, great working session study group. If you, you know, for anybody who wants to do, I know Aaron's been posting a bunch of stuff on uh, YouTube and I think they posted their final video recently. Um, but yeah, th those are all fantastic and great. And you know, of course, if anybody's attending GTC, you can also learn more. Um, but I, yeah, really diving in there. And if, you, if you're having a hard creative time, because like I'm not the most creative person on the planet, right? So I'm not going to be oh, like, oh, lighting and all this other stuff. I, I go to Richard for that. So <laughs> if I need fancy things, I get I get it from Richard. And then, um, but like there's, there's things that he'll be like, oh, I really want this. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'll like go in and I'll be like, oh, look, look at all the stuff I could just manipulate and just do. And then, and then he goes, how did you do that? And I'm like magic. And and just one one thing on USD as well, which people may not realize, is it comes in different flavors for different applications. So you can have vanilla USD, which is binary, and you can convert it to ASCII. Um, and you can even um, like it's like a zip file too. So there's a mm -hmm. USD a Z file which zips up everything together. So it's like a, you see you see so it's a transport file system. It's a binary. It's ASCII. And what's good about the ASCII format is you can have a, a USD file open like a viewer, like a USD viewer, and literally edit it in a, in a simple text editor um, and, and make modifications to flags or to materials or bindings, or, or you can turn entire sections off of a model. And as you save that USD file, it, it will live update in your application. So you, you, do, you can't do that with, say, a Max file or a Maya file or an FBX file because those are kind of like tied off formats. They're like, they're like proprietary. But USD is designed to be open world and open source. And, you know, I, it's like that scene in The Matrix where the guy's so good he can just read the code directly. He doesn't need the viewer. It's like so there's people that can just read a USD file and be like, oh, yeah, we, we, have, we have guys like Maddie that can just read a USD file and go to line 3047 and, oh, this is the, we're just going to turn this thing off. And then it updates the whole scene in real time. So there's a lot of there's a lot of new advantages to USD that's that's not just like your average um, file format. And and I wanted to throw out Richard and Jen. I love the interplay between the two of you because you're pushing each other's uh, boundaries. And I think that's oh, exactly that's what the community needs to do, right? And and it's just like like go where you love and then there's people around they're going to go a different direction and figure out what they do and work together and then uh, this collaborative kind of experience is awesome and in fact if anybody ever needs direct help jen and richard and edmar they're, they're all in the discord channel uh and just go check it out and in fact more powerfully there are other people in the community that are not from nvidia in the discord channel who are who are really really incredibly helpful so every resource is available to you. It's just a question of like, what do you want and how do you want it? And so far, everything I've seen is somebody imagines something, it's always like, well, here's how you would do that. Um, speaking of which, we should talk about questions. There's a few in here. There's one from uh, um, Lego up at the very beginning about Replicator. And there's uh, one from Glenn here. Should we take those? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then a couple people are asking about where do they get to the USD study group, uh, how they become involved. So that's on our Discord server. I just pasted a link that brings you right to the USD channel on the NVIDIA Omniverse Discord channel, so it's in the chat. Um, but yeah, uh, and great to see. I see a few people are here attending GTC. That's awesome. Uh, Glenn's coming on site, so I look forward to meeting you there, Glenn. Um, okay, so here we go. We have a, a question 
from Lego Buildings Review. Does Replicator support overriding the material of the USD object on all layers and randomizing it from a list of materials? Who can take that one? Richard, it's all you. Yeah, I think Jen, Jen has written an example on Replicator and, and exactly how it all works. But, but generally, the way to think of this is that USD has this composition arc, and this composition arc includes sublayers and variants, and you can turn things on and off and all that kind of stuff. And a replicator script changes the composition. So you can include things, add things into the scene, move things around, change their locations, or show and hide different variations, show and hide, change the materials on them and all that good stuff. So this is right up the alley for what replicator would do. I don't know, Jen, maybe you want to talk about like how to conceptually think about like the yeah, the, the thing that's throwing me off is the overriding the materials of a USD object on all layers. Um, because for sure, Replicator can randomize based off of a list of materials. That is 100% possible. Mm. You, you can do that. In terms of uh, all on all layers, it really depends on what your um, composition looks like. Right. So, you know, what takes priority over others? So the current layer that you're working on, if that is your priority layer, then yes, it can overwrite all of that. However, if the um, uh, if that layer has a lower priority, it might not necessarily overwrite it. So it really depends on how you're going to be setting up your composition arc um, for that. So I think that's the yes. most the easiest way I can explain it. Um, Makes sense. So let's let's yeah. talk about that concept of, of composition for just a second. There's this this notion called liver peas, uh, like uh, it's the order of things. So it's it's um, local, which is the sublayers. Uh, what's next? Instancing, uh, variants, live, er, uh, <laughs> um, 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 references, references, and payloads. Yeah. Right. And so these things there, there's there's pre composition which is just this raw file. And like, like Richard said, you can see, you could open it up in a, in an ASCII style format and read through it and see how everything is structured. And then there's a post composition view, which is after you've applied all this liver piece, what does the scene look like afterwards? And so in your question, the tricky nuance that Jen rightly pulled out was if it's, if it's, if you're talking about post composition, yep, no problem, because you just would have replicator make a higher priority sub layer. And then it would, it would stomp out all the other composition arc pieces, and then it would do what you want it to do. If you're talking about pre-composition, you could still statically crawl that file and see all the other layers and all the other layer data in it, which are which are which would not be stomped by Replicator unless you wrote some extra script to go through and actually change the UST file to make that happen. So I think in general, though, you would probably think about in a post-composition world, um, so Replicator would be a, a great way to go after that. Yeah. Yeah, because you definitely want to set up your scene, um, uh, especially if we're trying to do uh, things with Replicator. So, like for example, if we take like a factory and you're trying to figure out, all right, I need to have my robots going around here. You want to make sure that factory is already set before you, you know, put in and add like differentiations between the scene, right? So, it's it's definitely a more a post rather than a pre. Nice, so, great question. So just just yes. one one other thought on that. So uh, in one of the examples that I showed where, you know, you see the sensor that's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, populating the C-scan data, uh, like a heat map. So I use the material textures, right? So that's how I kind of like override. So as and when the probe moves, I kind of like populate the texture uh, on, on, a, on a mesh that's on the surface. So. Uh, if I can do that at what one layer, it's it's possible to do it on different layers. But then again, you know, the the liver piece is going to hold, uh, uh, is going to dictate what's going to be displayed on the screen for you. So, very cool. All right, we got a, a nice question from Glenn here, who uh, works in the AEC industry or architectural engineering instruction. Is it possible to automatically script Composer to collect the USD and textures? I um I just I just asked the guy that would know. So I I actually know the guy that wrote that, which is a very nice guy, and I've just asked him. So I'm not sure on that. But, let me um, give you, I, I'm I don't know the answer to this, but let me give you how I would figure out the answer to this. Um, 
well, first talk to Richard. Richard knows everything. So that would be perfect. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but no, actually, the way I would do this is I would look for this function in the code. So, mm -hmm. you know, you I would open up Composer or code or whatever, and I would start searching through, you know, if, if you if you uh, open up Visual Studio and you're messing around building your own extensions, you can search through all of the code, at least all the Python code. Um, there's some C++ that you wouldn't be able to search through, but you can search for the collect function and then start to see, well, what do we do? And then you can find that collect function and see how it's done. Because there is a button in the product that you push collect and it does stuff, which means it's scripted, right? So there, yes. and because we did it, we built everything in a way that anybody could build it. So philosophically, you should be able to do it too. Um, and I mean, clearly you could just write this on your own. You could just say, hey, uh, here, here is a post composition USD scene and here's all the USDs that are referenced in it. You can walk the list just as if you're walking a, uh, a series of text files. And then you could, you could gather up all the pieces and change all the references. And you could clearly do this all on your own in a very brute force kind of a way. But I, but I bet there's some function that's already built out. I mean, I know there is one. It's just a question of how could you utilize it and put it into your own experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see he, uh, Glenn's got a follow up here for, but then you would have to run Composer. So I think I want to throw a question back at you, Glenn, if you mm -hmm. can answer it is what do you mean by automatically scripting? Like, are you talking about we have Composer open, you have a USD file open, you just want to be able to go through that whole USD file for all its different layers and pull out all the texture data? Or are we talking about you just want to have a side script co completely separate from Omniverse that just basically goes through a USD file? One, what relates to that, one of the things I've seen people do is they build a kit-based app with no UI. So it's like a headless app. It's effectively a microservice that then you can run and do whatever you want to do with it. So you could you could build out an extension in your own app that has no UI and you could just run it from your command line and it could do the processing you want it to do and then carry on. So you, you can embed this into your workflow processing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm actually opening the kit file now as we, as we speak. So. So yeah, it is it is pretty easy to find that. And and you know, you can I've said this before, you know, once you copy that kit file, I wouldn't go packing it up straight away because you'll break something, but <laughs> but copy it at least first. It's it's a 32k file. I'm looking at it right now. And um, you know, what what we're all saying is we're encouraging you to go break stuff because that's how you learn, you know. Explore, so, spelunk. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> explore, break, whatever. Um, you know, it's Bye, like right. it's like I mean, it is, it is like Lego blocks. You've got to, you've got to get in there. So uh, uh, the thing about Kit is everything is modular and we, we, we snap things together. You know, like we, we have this UI, we snap with this, with this program, with this USD structure, with this RTX renderer, and it's all in that Kit file. And all it is, is doing is making calls and sub calls to these, to these various extensions. So yeah, just like Paul said, anything that's can be possibly done in Composer is pulling from a, from a subscript somewhere in an extension. And it's just a question of finding that extension and, uh, you know, bring it out to the forefront or turning it off, disabling it. Um, and, you know, we have a whole uh, library of, of uh, tutorials online and are more coming where it shows you how to just start either. You can either start from a blank kit file with nothing at all. Day one and just pull it in like hello world uh -huh. and build up. But, you know, some people like to learn in reverse. I'm, I'm more of an example guy. Yeah, I don't mind looking at a blank page because they're gonna yeah. freak out. You know, that's more that's more Jen's thing. Blank page, beautiful. I'm a delete my guy. Thing I like to is, see it and just delete stuff. Wow. Yeah, my <laughs> thing is, oh, I like this thing. Yeah. Uh, what happens if I turn this knob? Oh crap! I'm crashing the spaceship. I, I better put it back. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I'll figure out what all the, the all the knobs do, and um, and that's how that's how I learn. I like to. I'm a, I'm a reverse engineer, so that, that's what I do. Now, dude, let me ask you, how did you, so what resources did you use when you were learning uh, to develop? What was helpful? Yeah, so, so I, was, I was about to add to, to Richard's thing, so which is like, uh, you know, go break things, right? So uh, just, just, just be ready to spend some nights and weekends uh, if you want to solve. Uh, but it's, it's fun, right? So that's the whole point. So the, the whole point is like, you know, uh, you know, that the only way is to build things. And I think, you know, you got to start somewhere, uh, you know, either uh, at the bottom or the top or the middle somewhere. And then like, you know, you start building stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, so 
uh, I got uh, you know uh, a lot of documentation on the NV Nvidia site, and uh, at that time, you know, there were a lot of changes that were happening, and I think you know it was great that you know we had folks like. Uh, Maddie, Jen, and uh, you know the entire Discord community who uh, you know is is uh, you know willing to jump and try to uh, help. And I think you know Alan. Uh, there are a lot of guys on on the Discord channel like you know uh, Papachuk, uh, Zia. So all these guys kind of like you know work uh, you know helping us uh, uh, in in all sorts of ways. And uh, you know a big shout out to Michael Wagner. So you know yeah. we we have like a uh, you know monthly call. I have a monthly call with him. He is kind of like <laughs> become my mentor so it's like awesome. uh you know awesome. it's like <laughs> so so uh yeah so i th i think that the oh the way is to you know hey come to this card share what problems you have and you know so that we can help you know we can you know uh, somebody is going to uh, you know help you may not be immediately right so uh you know a lot of people are working on their own projects but then you know they're willing to help uh, and obviously the uh, you know the documentation including the the open usd site so mm -hmm. uh, all these resources, you know, uh, helped us tremendously. And there are a lot of people who I'm not naming right now, but then like, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's how the community, uh, you know, is coming together to help. And I greatly appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I, I also wanted to call out the like Glenn talked about Max script. That's a great way to do it too. You could do it in whatever I've, I've certainly seen integrations. I think Ashley wrote one where it was like, um, launch Blender in headless mode, run some script inside of Blender, have it do some stuff. Blender then saves the USD into the connect through the connect SDK. And then it fires off an event into the Omniverse app and then it fires up and does the thing. So you could totally do that. Um, also the connect SDK is available for any app that you want to use. If an app has a plugin system, you can build a connector inside that app. I know we've built some, those other apps have built some, but you can build your own bespoke purpose built one it's for you so that runs inside of the other app and it can run that app's scripting language if you want or it could run kit based stuff too because it's got the ability to run kit inside those connectors so you've got a lot of options for how you might want to get at this kind of data and i see that it looks like richard you, you posted in here where the where the collect tool is so that's pretty cool dude yeah so he he that can call, call that command now we just had an example last week of somebody who's a blender expert who want who knows how to run blender from the shell command um to do like like because you know blender is a very popular tool and he didn't know how to connect it to composer and what we showed him is that composer has a full script editor built in really powerful and so he he already had the two halves of, of he had blender he had composer he could shell out from blender through like you know powershell or the command prompt and then as soon as you can tie into that with a script editor and composer it's like it's like two halves of that that tunnel and if you can get them to talk then you know you, you can exit out of composer out of blender connect them at the base shell level and then talk to them through code and and that that you know it, it just depends how good you are at, at, at programming obviously there is there is a developer side of things it's yeah. not it's not going to be easy necessarily out of the box for somebody that's never done code but you know with a little bit of coding and a little bit of uh, example editing you can connect the dots and you can quickly um, you know, eventually you could write your own extension. We have, we have people that literally said, this wasn't working for me for whatever reason, but my particular workflow. So I just, I just took an extension yeah. and I, I tweaked it. And now it's running exactly the way my, my company wants. I've got 30 artists and they didn't, they didn't like this, but we tweaked it and now it's running for us. So, you know, everything we, everything we do is a starting point for you to you to springboard off. That's really the, the point of what we're trying to do. I love it. So Edmar, that was the really long verbose answer to your question of how to get started. I think it's do it, do a taste of USD and a taste of build an extension. And then that opens the doors for all those places people were headed. That's awesome. Uh, and then you had posted a, a great link earlier, getting started on open USD. Uh, YouTube does not allow links to go through, but if you could paste that link in our private chat on StreamYard, Amelia can grab that and make sure everyone sees that. Cause I think you posted a great resource. It's, I think it's a Google doc. Yeah, I, I just uh, reposted uh, to Amelia, so she should be able to. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. So, so much, yeah. uh, this, I can, this hour has just flown by, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we, we could we could definitely do this again very shortly. Uh, but we, we hope that the next step for a lot of you is actually coming to GTC and joining us for Open USD Day, uh, chatting with our team, coming to the labs, um, going to the Open USD Study Group on our Discord server. 
Um, if you have any questions, if you missed anything, just uh, post a note on the live streams channel on our Discord server, uh, and we'll uh, we'll be able to help you or just send me a direct message. If you are planning to come GTC and you need help with your meetings, shoot me an email, edmartnvidia.com. Very happy to help. Um, we have a full team that's going to be there to support all of you and your your. Uh, we want to help with your networking. We want to help with your businesses. Uh, Les was earlier talked about inception being a GTC. If you have a startup. GTC is an amazing place for you to go and actually meet the startup team. You get a ton of free resources. Even if you can't go, um, you can register uh, for the uh, Inception on the uh, Inception website very easily as well. But there's really no replacement for being being there and being able to meet people and form those really valuable relationships. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been to conferences where someone I met uh, uh, has been instrumental in uh, a part of my business or I was able to introduce them to somebody else just because of that meeting. Um, really just magical things happen when you, when you're face to face. So, uh, we hope all of you can, there can join us. Uh, if not definitely attend virtually, we're going to do our best job to support everybody, uh, through live events and doing some, uh, post, post session recaps on our discord. Um, uh, any, any closing comments, kind of words of wisdom for anybody before we close out? I guess one, which is, I didn't get to make my pun, which is. <laughs> Edmar, me, and Richard are basically variants of one another because we're all wearing the same T-shirt, except I think theirs might be black and mine's navy blue. I don't know. We did not plan this. It's funny. So, Les, I was going to share screenshots earlier, but maybe I'll post it on the Discord server on the live stream channel uh, right after this. People, you're curious. I, I, I had a tech rehearsal with Les yesterday. And he was wearing like the same thing I was. He has, <laughs> he has an awesome NVIDIA logo, a metal logo he did as a necklace. I had the one right above me over here. Um, it was like I was looking in the mirror. So I'll post that picture. It's pretty funny. Um, there's going to be a nice gear store that's going to be open at GTC. So if you're a big fan of NVIDIA swag, actually, that's another reason to come to GTC. You're going to be able to get stuff you can't get it anywhere else. Um, Anyway, we hope uh, we hope that this is informative uh, live stream for everybody. Uh, and Nadu, thank you so much for presenting uh, uh, about your business. Uh, you know, I think industrial inspection is such a, a such a, a, a helpful area to so many different companies in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly, the work you're doing is very impactful uh, and can save uh, companies a lot of money, a lot of hassle, a lot of stress. Um, so that uh, leveraging the digital twins in the way you are is, is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. And thank you thank again you for so much, yeah. the community. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll see everybody next week. Uh, we're going to announce that live stream shortly on the discord server. Um, until then, uh, thanks everybody for joining us and we'll see, uh, we'll see you on the forums and on discord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon.